without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. You're watching The Moment, Intuitive Machines' Nova C lunar lander touched down on the surface of the moon Thursday evening. It's the first time the U.S. has landed on the moon in more than five decades, since 1972. Intuitive Machines also now holds the title of the first private company to successfully land on our celestial neighbor. For more, we're joined by Christian Davenport. He covers NASA and the space industry for The Washington Post. So besides it being a private lander, what makes this landing uh, particular? Well, uh, as you mentioned, it's the first time that we've been back to the moon in uh, more than 50 years. Uh, the last time the United States spacecraft touched down on the lunar surface was Apollo 17 in December of 1972. And now we've done it with a robotic lander. There are no people on board this. Uh, but we have shown that it can be done, and it could be done under a new paradigm that NASA is using more and more to explore, and that's these public-private partnerships uh, where they're reaching out to the commercial sector, companies like Intuitive Machines, to harness those capabilities to get us back to the moon. Ultimately, what NASA wants to do is to bring astronauts there as part of its Artemis program, hopes to do that by 2026. So this is seen as a significant first step in that direction. And what in this public-private partnership uh, is the public side hoping to get out of this particular mission and the, the, uh, the public and the private? Tell us what they both get out of this. Right. So NASA is actually paying Intuitive Machines $118 million for this mission. But it's one customer of several customers where it's got six uh, payloads on board, uh, one of which actually was, was taken in at the last minute because the company's guidance sensors were malfunctioning. They did another lap around the moon, another orbit, sent up a programming software patch to be able to use as a tech demo that NASA had on board to use its sensors so that it, it could guide the spacecraft down to a soft landing. Um, an, another payload it had on board, for example, was to study the dust plume, how that lunar regolith would kick up uh, as the spacecraft lands. Um, we know, for example, in Apollo 11, when, when the spacecraft took uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin uh, away from the moon, it kicked off a real plume, actually knocked over the American flag that they had planted. But NASA's really never studied that. And as it uh, continues the Artemis campaign, which is centered on going to the south pole of the moon where there's water, they want to be able to land space close proximity to each other. So they need to understand, you know, how the disturbance of the lunar surface takes place. That's just so, one of the, uh, the examples. So let me catch up with what you just said there, though, Christian, which sounded incredibly cool. So when the vehicle is doing this one, one lap, one extra lap around, circling over O'Hare, essentially, it gets a software patch uploaded to it while it's in the middle of that process? On the fly, oh yeah. My no, God. And this was, <laughs> you don't see it every day. Uh, and they, they were troubleshooting in real time to try to make this essentially switch out which sensors would be feeding this data you know, to the system's computers, uh, which is then looking autonomously at the lunar surface and looking at where it would land, where the slope is OK. It wants to avoid rocks and boulders. If you remember the Apollo 11 moon landing, you know, Neil Armstrong took over control uh, of of the lander and with very little fuel left, guided it down to a safe spot. That's what uh, this lander uh, was doing autonomously. Now, we should say it is on the surface. The lander is communicating with Earth. But there was a dicey period where they didn't know what the health was. And we don't know its correct orientation. We don't know if it's upright, if it tumbled, if it's on its side. We know it's on the moon, and we know it's talking to the ground, but we don't know actually its precise condition yet. Right, if it's just saying, I've fallen and I can't get up. So when will we know? Well, uh, on board, another of these uh, payloads was actually a camera system that was developed by students and faculty at Embry-Riddle University that it was supposed to deploy, sort of shoot off the lander uh, about 100 feet high before it was supposed to touch down and take a series of pictures of the lander as it made its descent and then as it was on the surface. Now, we have not seen those images yet. It could be just a matter of the moon is 240,000 miles away. It's going to take a <laughs> 
to get those images back on Earth, and we may need to be patient, but I think those images will tell the story of what ultimately happened here. Christian Davenport, I could have this conversation for hours, but we got to go with The Washington Post. Thank you so much for being with us.